Welcome back to Glamour Unfiltered, hosted by me, Josh Smith. And today we are joined by the Oscar nominated star who's literally <laughs> flying without wings. <laughs> yeah, no, it's Felicity Jones. Hey. Now, I love this. And you've basically been in my cultural life as long as I can remember. Oh, I remember the worst witch. Oh, lovely. Of course, yes, Chalet Girl. Yes, <laughs> what a queen. I know. And you're playing another really powerful role in the aeronauts as a scientific explorer. Yes. Taking to the skies <laughs> with Eddie Redmayne. But you played so many amazing, powerful characters in your time. What have you learned about your own power going through your career, would oh, you say? That's a really good question. I don't know, I think you do take a little bit of the character mm. and you take the bits that you like anyway, but this with playing Amelia Wren, I think part of what I loved about her was that she's really impulsive, she doesn't overthink, she she acts before she thinks um, and, she's, and she sort of takes anything on um, and I definitely I like to push that side of myself, you know, I can be someone who probably overthinks things a little bit too much, so it was nice to play someone who's just a bit of a wild cat mm. and throws caution to the wind. So have you stopped overthinking so much after yeah, playing totally. this character? After, yeah, it's gone. It's, it's gone. gone. Yeah, it's like therapy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> play, play the right character and yeah. it's all gone. Never, yeah, never worry about anything now. Mm. You know, anxiety, gone. Oh, tick. <laughs> tick. Wow. We should really put this on the NHS, uh, this film. Yeah, I know, exactly. Drama therapy. Um, because also it is a film about self-discovery as much as it is scientific discovery. What's your own journey with self-discovery been like for you? And what would you say have been like the bumps along the way? Well, I think it's all, I mean, usually it's kind of the battle with confidence, isn't it? Isn't mm. that the thing you find? And then when you get older and you get into your 30s, I think you stop caring so much. I think that's what's been so nice about the past few years is that, um, and you get less self-conscious. You still have worries and you still kind of, you know, I used to have really bad, get really nervous and worried about things when I was younger and, you know, to the point that I'd sort of be vomiting before, you know, doing certain exams and things like that, sort of terrible anxiety. And that's definitely got better as I've, I've got older. And I think you, you just don't sweat the small things so much, do you? Because mm. also in, in that kind of trajectory, you become more at one with your own voice, right? And this character makes her voice heard and known. With your own voice, how hard has that been to have your voice heard throughout your career, would you say? And what have been the changes in that? It's definitely, because um, I think you always have a voice, mm. don't you? And it's just um, letting that voice come through. I think it's, and that again is another confidence thing, isn't it? That, that you don't, I think it's that you don't have anything to prove to anyone. Because I think so much you think, you're so worried about what everyone else is thinking and then you get to a point where you go, you know, you can't control other people's opinions and other people's thoughts and they're gonna think what they want to think and you, you have to be, you have to be bold. Mm. And you kind of have to overcome your own inner critic as well, don't you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, th I always think well, it must be so nice just to have no inner critic. Mm. You must just be so happy. It'd be a lovely life to lead. <laughs> but it also pushes you to be your best self and put your best foot forward, I think, as well. Have you found that? Yeah, I guess there's a certain amount of... Um, there can be a certain amount of achievement that comes from a certain perfectionism and a certain pressure, but I sort of feel it only gets you so far and then actually actually to do anything really creative I think being too tough on yourself as isn't actually the best the best way mm. and I think it's actually the opposite it's a kind of letting go of that critic that is when you achieve the really exciting stuff and, and you trust the people around you you know mm. you're not you can't do everything on your own you can't do anything on your own it's only in partnership with other people that you achieve something interesting mm. because at the center of this film is an amazing companionship you have of Eddie's character what has this film and your personal relationship with him taught you about the power of companionship and friendship and what you can learn from teamwork? Well, I think you just do really interesting work when you when you work with people that you respect, that mm. you admire. It, it makes, it just made it so much easier knowing that we already had that trust in place. It also makes it fun that you can have a bit of a joke in between, you know, takes and things like yeah. that. Um, and I think you, you do, it just doesn't feel as, as, as scary really because you're building something together. So you're taking you know, the responsibility together. It's not all on your shoulders. And, mm. and with Eddie, it's an absolute partnership in that way that we, 
we both kind of take the pressure together and, 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 and share in it, which makes it much easier. But as well, because you are stuck on this balloon for quite a long time. And there must have been the moments when you were filming this when you are a bit like, oh my God, I just need my own personal space. When you're playing a role like this, which is also quite challenging in itself, you're like you're doing stunts, you're dangling off the edge of balloons, you're doing a lot. How do you look after your own mental well-being? Would you say? Uh, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, this was one of the hardest experiences I've ever had, mm. and and physically, it was absolutely grueling. I mean, to the point where we were both covered in bruises and bashed up by the end of shooting. Um, I uh, definitely um, self care was not <laughs> was not not the uh, order of the day on this one. Uh, you just sort of it's a bit like being in the army. I think you sort of just you just keep going until the end. Yeah. How do you look after yourself afterwards? What are your self care regimes? Would you um, say? I have to remind myself about self-care. You know, I often see my friends and they'll just naturally be booking kind of massages and, and um, nail appointments. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I have to do that. I have, that has to be part of my life. But it mm. doesn't come naturally at all. Um, but when I do do it, I feel much better about myself. But, um, but I think I always find just exercise is the thing, you know, for, for releasing those endorphins mm. and keeping you happy and active and, Bit and yeah, not taking things so seriously. And clearing that mind. Definitely. You just need to sometimes just run it out. I know. And it's free. <laughs> and it's free. Right. You just, you know, go for a run. <laughs> winner, winner. Because also in this, it's all about, I mean, as everything's about in life, a journey to make this sound no, like it's journey. X Factor. <laughs> but there are so many highs and lows in this, and you've had the most amazing career that's lasted such a long time. What do you think has been the low you've learnt the most from in your life and the high you've learnt the most from? Ah, that's very good for a film about ballooning. With yeah, lots of up and down. Ups and downs. Yes. <laughs> uh, I think, I mean, in terms of career, I think you, um, you realise that there's never a perfect job that it's, ne you know, that it never comes in the perfect way, that there are always going to be little compromises, but actually it's what you can do with something. And I think you have to take opportunities when they're there. Um, and then I think the highs are when, it's always when you make something and it connects. Mm. And it connects to a lot of people. That's really special. And that's sort of what you're hunting for all the time. You know, what is that magic formula that makes everyone love something? Mm. And then, because we were talking about voices and being heard, and like we're saying, you do play a lot of powerful female characters. Is there a time when you've really stood up to have your own voice heard, and you've been patted yourself on the back of it and pushed yourself to do it? Can you remember a time you've done that? Yeah, I think from actually playing Ruth Bader Ginsburg, um, who's a pretty formidable uh, woman, she gave me a lot of um, strength and I used to get quite nervous about public speaking mm. um, and I noticed and she's made some brilliant speeches and she always has a little piece of paper with her and she reads it and I always used to think you know you've got to be completely off the cuff but I realized if you write something that you believe in and that you care about then don't don't you know who cares if you're reading it from a sheet of paper it's the words that matter mm. and so I definitely felt from seeing her and and learning from that that public speaking doesn't need to be as scary and what would you say for the audience sitting out here? Because we've been talking about confidence, inner voices, science in, in the critics. What is the kind of like empowerment mantra that always gets you through? Hmm. Don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. It's an important thing to remember. Yeah. Because we yeah. get so bogged down in these really tiny things. And when you actually look back on it and the perspective, you're yeah, like, Yeah. Hum. I, I think so. And I think it's... um. I think often reminding yourself to uh, probably um, don't take it all too seriously, I mm. think. Because, you know, we don't have that long here. And it goes super quick. <laughs> well, on that note, for Lizzie Jones, thank you so much for joining me. You're epic. And oh, congrats. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Killed thank it. Thank you. What thank you so interview. much. Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of Glamour Unfiltered, hosted by me, Josh Smith. And we will see you in two weeks for another epic episode of Glamour Unfiltered with such epic people as Felicity Jones.